So yesterday somebody asked me, or today, um, specifically more about what type of meditation they should be practicing or what type of meditation is most helpful for recovery from uh, chronic fatigue syndrome or long COVID. So I thought best to make a video discussing that because it's a great question and I'm sure there's many people who would like to hear my thoughts on that or, or my personal experience with that because again that's um, I'm just sharing what's worked for me. So there's a couple of different meditations that are going to be helpful and that are going to be important. And I also want to say that I'm going to make some suggestions here and then it's about finding what works for you. So if you already are doing some meditation practices that are working for you, then absolutely stick with that. Even if I don't mention them at all, um, it's really about finding what works for you. But if you are new to meditating um, and you haven't practiced much, then this will probably be quite helpful because um, it's, I'm also going to share how to get, get into um, developing a meditation practice. Uh, so this is more for um, if, you, if you're new to it, but also if you already do have uh, certain practices that you do, it can be helpful to maybe try some of the ones I suggest as well, even if you, um, you know, just as a, a, to add to your current practices. So what I recommend first off is starting with a, and I spoke about this in my last video as well, but I'll speak a bit more specifically here, and starting with a focused awareness practice, um, a mindfulness practice where you're trying to build your awareness of, you know, it's kind of building concentration in a sense, and so it, a great way to start and this is what I practice uh, I still practice it uh, it's what I was practicing a lot on the 10-day retreats I did recently is focusing on the sensations of the breath at the nose so to run through how this type of practice would go is you're going to sit down you're going to set yourself a timer of however long you want to start with and you're going to focus on what it feels like to breathe at the nose. What's really important here about this practice is you are, your mind is going to wander. You are going to get lost in thought. And that's what the practice is about, is becoming aware of when you're getting lost in thought. So it's really I spoke about this quite a little bit in my last video, so this might be a little bit repetitive, uh, but I thought I would just make a video specifically addressing it. Um, you, you're going to get lost in thought, and it's about continuously bringing attention back to the sensations of the nose. Because what you're kind of giving, what this practice is doing, is you're giving yourself a an anchor point from which to observe the mind. So if you don't have that anchor point, and I just say observe your thoughts, you're going to just get lost in thought and not realize that you're lost in thought. It can be a difficult place to start. It can be an incredibly powerful practice to just notice thoughts as thoughts. Um, and I highly recommend that practice as well. If you're just noticing um your mind thinking and wondering and thoughts coming and going um, it's incredibly powerful because you can start to see that you're not your thoughts you can start to notice that a thought comes and it goes and what the thought is actually saying doesn't matter right so it's not you so you could have a thought saying i'm struggling so much i am so sick that is a thought and that thought comes and that thought goes and that's not you. So that's what you're kind of developing by practicing a focused attention practice. You, you're giving yourself, you're building that awareness so that you can become more aware of your mind. 
So specifically, if you're starting, it's a very powerful practice and a very important practice. And I remember for myself, I, I'd been meditating for a while, uh, different kinds of practices, and I eventually decided that I needed to do a lot more of this kind of practice because I knew that I got lost in thought way too much and I wasn't aware of it. So I needed to build my concentration, my awareness. So eventually at one point I was doing that practice uh, in a, twice a day for 45 minutes to an hour, just focusing on that. And that had incredible benefits for my recovery. Like probably um, it was over that period when I started recovering incredibly quickly because um, especially long periods of that kind of meditation, it just, it's just, it's incredibly powerful. So to start off with, that's one type of meditation practice. And you can do it on different things. You can do it on the sensations of your feet on the floor and you can try and fix attention there and then you get lost in thought and, oh, I'm supposed to be focusing on my feet on the floor. But what's incredibly uh, helpful about using the breath at the nose as your focus point is as your awareness becomes sharper and sharper you there's so many subtle sensations here it's a very subtle a lot of subtle sensations there you can start to notice the more and more subtle sensations so you can continue to deepen that uh, awareness and the the sharpness of your mind um, through through that so it's a it's highly recommended as that's the place to work with because you can get more and more subtle um, and that's really what you want to do. So you start out, it may be very gross sensation. So you just focus on this whole area and just can you feel breathing? And then can you notice the point when the first breath, the exhale ends and the gap between the exhale and the inhale. And then when the inhale starts and all the way with the inhale and then when the inhale ends and then when the exhale starts and then all the way to the end of the exhale. And that's eventually what you're doing. And then if you're doing this for a long time, so say when I was doing my, my long practices, you go deeper and deeper and deeper until you're just feeling the pure sensation. And then thoughts will come and then you come back to that. So when you're starting out, it's not going to be like that. It's going to be, um, okay, you're noticing the breath going in and out and then your mind wanders for 10 minutes, maybe hopefully not 10 minutes, but that can happen and that's fine. And again, I mentioned this quite a bit in my video yesterday, but um, it's in that moment that you wake up that you reset your intention. So, oh, let me start again with my breath at my nose. And I'm going to stay here as long as I can and until you get lost in thought again, and then you come back. So that would be uh, specifically if you don't practice a lot of meditation, because um, there's a bunch of practices you can add together. And that would be one that is very helpful and it will help you throughout your day. You'll just be more aware of how you, rea you are reacting to symptoms. So the symptoms come up and the thoughts start coming up. And now because you've been building your awareness of mind, because as I said, the focus is the one thing, but by noticing your thoughts, you are you're giving yourself a point from which to observe the mind, basically. And then that's going to help you so much throughout the day. So that would be one. The next kind of meditation practice that is really helpful, um, and this is more the meditation that I do in my guided meditation. So if you want to um, do this kind of practice, um, you can, I'll explain it here now, but you can go try one of the guided meditations. Um, I made a playlist, they've, they've done two there, there. And what that practice is about is it's not a focused attention practice. It's a, it's almost the, the, in Zen they call it shikantaza. It's a do nothing practice. You, uh, stopping. You're basically stopping the mind, but you're not. Because then that's something you're going to be trying to doing. So it's it's an incredibly powerful practice because you're not trying to do anything, and that's what we're always doing twenty four seven is trying to do something with the mind. So now you're actually just saying. Just stop and let whatever happens happen. And it can be 
uh, really helpful to do this with a guided meditation because it can be very difficult. Um, it's so easy to try to do something and you don't even realize it. So uh, that's another practice that's very powerful is to just, again, you set a timer for like 10, 20 minutes and you just say, I'm going to feel whatever is here and not try to make anything happen. And that's a really important intention to set whatever meditation you're doing, even the noticing the breath of the nose. What a lot of people get stuck on early on, and this is what I did, is you're not trying to control the breath at all. You're not trying to make long, slow, calm breathing. This is really key. You can get very frustrated because it's not about controlling the breath. It's not about making anything happen at all. And this is what I would say is like the foundation of, uh, of meditation is not making anything happen. It's noticing what is here just as it is. That is really key because that is what is driving all of the suffering and it is not just uh, confined to chronic illness and symptoms. In whatever we're doing, it's as soon as we're trying to change what is, so you're trying to have less of the uncomfortable and then cling to the comfortable, but everything is just changing all the time. So you're noticing as it is. And I would say that's the key foundation for all these practices. So it's another good intention to set at the start of your meditation practice is to not have any expectation of how this meditation is supposed to go. And when this can go wrong, is if you've had a very deep experience or a very peaceful experience, say in your last sit, so maybe yesterday you meditated for 30 minutes and somehow it just kind of really sunk into this deep, peaceful state. Um, and if this doesn't happen, that's absolutely fine. Again, you're not trying to make anything happen. But what will tend to happen is the next time you sit, even unconsciously, you're trying to make that happen again because it was so peaceful, it was so calm. And now this is why you're, you're going to struggle. You're going to, um, you're going to suffer a little in that meditation because you're trying to change what's happening. So I talk a lot about not fighting the uncomfortable stuff, but the flip side of that, and it's just as important, is not clinging to the comfortable stuff. It's really about just noticing what's here. So can I just drop liking and disliking and just notice what is with no label of this is good, this is bad. What is it without all of that? So combining these kinds of practices daily, so to do spend a little bit of time doing a focused practice and then a little bit of time doing an open awareness kind of practice of just noticing what is here, what is the moment like if I don't do anything to it. I don't try to make anything happen. What is just here? And again, that's what I, I do in my guided meditations. And then also the when things are feeling really difficult and intense that's when i recommend the really and again i would recommend doing all of these every day if you can um, the deep compassion practice um, and that's kind of uh, similar to the the second one um, you're kind of just noticing what is most uncomfortable in your experience and then you're really uh, you're just letting it be as it is but you're actually Meeting it with compassion and love and acceptance is such a game changer because you're, you're kind of really flipping resistance on its head. But again, it's key here. You're not trying to make anything happen. It's really just allowing, accepting, letting experience be. So when it's really tough, you know, if you're going through a really tough day where there's a flare up or a crash, that's where I'd really make, recommend working with um, this really kind, compassionate practice. So just sitting for a bit and 
um, especially if emotions are coming up and often we don't even realize emotions are coming up but it's just like oh I've I've lost my um, you know I was on a good roll I was doing well and now I'm really struggling and this and that that's a lot of emotion just coming up you know a lot of frustration a lot of anger a lot of sadness um, so in, in this kind of practice working with whatever is here even if it's resistance even so another question somebody asked me and I, I'll make a whole video on this as well but they notice that they're fighting their symptoms um, at certain times in the day to even welcome that part of themselves because there's a part of themselves that's fighting the symptoms to to welcome that as well so okay there's resistance what does it feel like to not want symptoms to be here okay it feels like a no like a, a fighting okay can i just notice that and let that be there and that is a really really powerful practice and it's, it's really like cultivating this feeling of um of compassion and love for the really difficult stuff um very very powerful so uh, or another way that what you can practice this is i would try to feel into the sensations um in the middle of my chest at uh, the so-called heart center or you know around your heart but at the center of the chest and you can kind of feel into just um what does what do those sensations feel like and then can you like you, you can do this by thinking of something that that brings forward a feeling of love and then kind of trying to apply that to the difficult stuff as well so even just saying as deeply as you can i love you and see what does that feel like in, in your chest you know like can you evoke the strongest feeling of love and compassion? And you can maybe imagine you know, a pet you love very much. And how does that you know, make you feel like a certain intimacy or tenderness in your chest? And then kind of just feel into that a bit more. And um, you can kind of just, just let that be and it can kind of spread throughout the body a little bit if you just sit with that for a while. So that would be like a, a pure compassion-based practice where you just cultivating feelings of of love and uh, compassion um, so all that said that's kind of the practices that i've worked with the, the most and that were the most helpful for me and what i also want to touch on which um, is really key is some resources that you can use that can really help you uh, with your meditation practices so what i started with and i've mentioned these resources a couple of times but I'm going to specifically put it in this video because it's what I'm talking about here is I highly recommend the waking up app um, by Sam Harris it's got some very good guided meditations on there it's got an introductory um, course from Sam himself and then what really helped me the most was there's some really good um, the mini courses from different teachers on the app um, and specifically ones about the, the compassionate practices that I was talking about now the acceptance practices and then also the open awareness practices so um, the more the more non-dual um, which I'm not going to get into too much depth here but it's uh, it's more going really deep here um, to the the core of meditation practice of noticing um, where's the the one who feels like they're practicing meditation so doing a form of self-inquiry um, looking at experience more directly and this, um, so it can be called non-dual practices it's it's not two it's not um, a subject and an object of experience you're looking for that subject um, anyways there's a lot of that on the app as well so that's great and what's great is you can get the app for free as well it's a it's a paid for app um, and if you can't afford it though you can um, there's uh, on the website I think um, a scholarship option and you can just fill in your details and they you don't even have to send an email or anything they'll just grant you a scholarship so um, there's off there's also different payment levels so um, it's a really good app but if you can't afford it 
um, you can still get access to it, which is which is incredible. Um, so that's one. The Angelo DeLulo's uh, channel, Simply Always Awake, and his book, Awake, It's Your Turn, um, are incredible resources as well. And that's more focused on the non-dual um, awakening aspects. So the, again, the deeper aspects, really getting at the roots of what's causing you to um, suffer, what's causing you to uh, resist um, the, the, the real, real roots of it. Uh, incredibly powerful book. Uh, and th so that's, that's not so much the focused practice, but it's a very comprehensive book. Angelo touches on um, all of it in his book. It's, um, it's probably the most important book I ever read. Um, and it had the biggest impact on my, um, my recovery after I read that book and started applying the practices. So if you want to explore the really deeper stuff, that's, that's the book for you, um, potentially. It was for me, I can't say. Uh, for some people, it will just resonate. And for some people, it might not resonate. And it might, it's a, often a timing thing as well. It just might not be that time in your life where you're ready to really go that deep. Um, but often when you're struggling with something like this, where there's so much suffering, it's the best thing to do. Um, for me, that's what this whole journey was about. And I've got another video about that. Uh, I won't go into that anymore. The last thing I wanted, the last book, and this is a really helpful one as well, is, and this is more on the focused um, attention practice. And it was the book that helped me to really develop a focused attention practice. And it's so, it's so great because it um, really shows you how to actually overcome the pitfalls that will stop you from meditating. So it's kind of a very staged approach. So it's like stage one, you focus on this. Stage two, you focus on this. Stage three, you focus on this. Um, so as you're progressing. And the great thing is stage one is how to just develop a meditation, a daily meditation practice. So, you know, all the things that are going to stop you, like... You're not feeling motivated. You're feeling lazy. Um, you're not feeling this, not feeling that. It's, uh, that's what it really helped me with. So the book is called The Mind Illuminated um, by, I think it's uh, Kula Data, um, or I think that's his name. So I will try to link all of those resources in the description. But those those resources, and then Ajashanti's work is incredible as well. Um, his books are also, he's got a book, uh, True Meditation, um, which I was reading more recently, which is a great guide to um, really the more, the deeper meditation for awakening um, of, of not trying to make something happen. You're not trying to focus your mind. You're not trying to do this. Um, but again, all of those practices, I think, are a lot of helpful to start with a more, a focused awareness practice and then that kind of gives you the space to dive deeper with these other practices but check out some of those those resources if this if you want to take this deeper and i really would recommend taking it deeper because you can start to see how this whole experience you're going through is actually a kind of a first step in this awakening process it can be it can be a massive adventure um, and that's how this became the best thing that ever happened for me. Um, you know, early on, it felt like the worst thing that ever happened for me. But as I took this deeper and deeper and deeper, I, I realized that this was kind of just the start of um, a, a journey really to the depths of myself and, um, and really exploring that. Um, so yeah, why not take this opportunity? Uh, you've kind of been plucked out of the life you thought you were going to live. And um, you're, you're, you know, it's different for everybody, but maybe you're stuck with not a lot to do that you used to do. Um, and meditation is something that can help. Um, and if you start to explore it, but it can maybe be um, an incredible journey. So it's always a timing thing as well for some people. You're going to read a book and it's just going to be like, 
oh my God, this is the most important thing I've ever read. And it's because something really resonates there. It's, it can also happen with my videos. You know, if I'm talking about something and it feels like, oh my goodness, he's, um, you know, this is the best video I've ever watched. Because what I'm saying was resonating with a part of you. You know, there's a part of you that's feeling that this is true. And you can follow that um, deeper on this journey. So, yeah, explore, explore this deeper. Read Ajashanti's books, read Angelo's books, read, um, explore the stuff there. Um, so I will, yeah, I'll put those in the link. And um, that's just a brief uh dive into meditation practices and resources so good luck with it and i highly recommend trying to develop a daily practice and what can also be really helpful is to uh, commit to sitting um, no matter how uncomfortable it is uh, then you kind of take away the uh, decision of oh i'm not going to today because i'm not feeling great when you just say I'm, i meditate every morning after I wake up and every evening before I go to bed for whatever set time, um, then it doesn't matter how you're feeling, you're going to do it. And that can be really powerful as well. All right. Best of luck.